Hey, you, how's it going? So I had this patient the other day that they ordered an ultrasound of the penis for to rule out penile fracture. Now, in my department, we really don't have a protocol for penis ultrasound. We just kind of do like a limited exam, uh, check the, the, the anatomy. So his exam was normal, but I just wanted to go over the protocol that I pretty much created on the fly, which you're going to have to sometimes do with when you get these, uh, you know, these limited exams that you don't do on, on the regular. So I begin on the dorsal side of the penis. So in the anatomical position, the uh, penis pointing, you know, in the normal position, the dorsal is the aspect you see. So the dorsal aspect of the penis, I began there, proximal, so that's towards the mom's pubis or towards the body. And you can see here the two, corpus cavernosum and the corpus spongiosum. So I just label it dorsal penis, transverse, proximal. Take a couple pictures, right? You can use either the 15 or an 18 megahertz probe. And then I put the color Doppler. This exam was to rule out penile fracture. So you want to put color Doppler, make sure there's no abnormal collections. All right. So then we go to uh, dorsal penis transverse mid. Again, you can see the corpus cavernosum on either side. This is the right side. This is the left side. And then the corpus spongiosum. And... As you may know or may not know, the, cover, the, the fibrous covering of the, corpor the corpora cavernosum is the tunica albuginea. So you want to make sure that that's intact. All right, so mid. A couple pictures in mid. Now that I look at this, this kind of looks like a praying mantis. <laughs> All right, so corpus cavernosum with color Doppler. Again, corpus spongiosum. This is the dorsal aspect of the penis, the ventral aspect of the penis. So this is just pretty much the normal lay of the penis. The testicles would be down here. All right, then distal. Distal is towards the glands or the penis head. Again, corpus cavernosum, again, and corpus spongiosum. You can start seeing some of the more egogenic glands come into play. Uh, this patient was uncircumcised, so you can see these egogenic dots here. That's air under the foreskin. All right, so dorsal penis transverse distal. Put color Doppler again. You want to make sure that the corpus cavernosum are intact, that there's no abnormal collections or hypoechoic areas that may suggest a penile fracture. And then the glands. Here you can see the beginning or where the, where the urethra is, which would become the meatus. All right, glands. Put color Doppler. Again, you can see these egogenic dots all around the glands of the penis. That's air under the foreskin. That's normal. So once you're done with your transverse evaluation, you want to do sagittal of each corpus cavernosum. So I began with the right. So dorsal penis, sag, right, Corpus cavernosum, this is the proximal section, and this distal would be this way. So here you can see the corpus cavernosum uh, perfectly. You can see the tunic albuginea is intact. There's no defects to suggest a penile fracture. So I'll take a couple images from proximal to distal. It tapers down distally as, it, as the corpus cavernosum connects to the glands. And then you can see here is the beginning of the glands. Right there. And this is corpus cavernosum. And then finally the glands right there. You can see the end of it right here. There's still foreskin over it. Put color Doppler. And then I did a, a panoramic view from proximal to distal. So there you can see how the, the, the corpus cavernosum of the penis dips into the body because the corpus cavernosum goes deeper than just the surface of the skin. And you can see the tunic albuginea very intact and then this is the glands right here and then i do the same thing with the left proximal distal corpus cavernosum you can pretty much see the whole corpus cavernosum here there's no defect there's no irregularities of the corpus cavernosum to suggest a penile fracture color doppler again oftentimes you'll see the cavernosal artery within the center of the corpus cavernosum and in a flaccid penis you may pick up doppler there or you may have a hard time picking up doppler there because the in a flaccid penis the penis is not really active so that artery is not engaged is not uh you know pumping blood into the corpus cavernosum so you may have a hard time picking up blood flow there obviously uh we when you do penile exams for erectile dysfunction they inject them with pap papavirin and in those cases, you will see the cavernosal artery with color Doppler, and you would also add spectrodoppler to measure the velocities 
and given the exam will tell you whether it's normal or not. This exam was not for that. This exam was just for penile fracture. So again, corpus cavernosus. You can see the tunica albuginea is intact. Here's the glands. Color Doppler. And then another panoramic showing from proximal to distal. So again, proximal, you can see the corpus cavernosa dipping into the body. Now the corpus cavernosum dips into the body and goes further into the body and attaches bilaterally to the ischiopubic rami. Now we're not going to be able to see that the extent of that with the ultrasound and you're not going to have a penile fracture there. So you can just see where it's dipping into the body. So here's a, so again, tunica albuginea intact and here's the glands. So once we're done with that, you can put the penis towards the, the body and then start uh, examining the corpus spongiosum from the ventral side of the penis. So I type the ventral penis transverse proximal. So here's the ventral side of the penis, and this is the corpus, corpus spongiosum. And in the center of the corpus spongiosum is where the urethra goes through. So it's also good to see. So now you have the corpus spongiosum proximal and the two corpus cavernosum posterior. So same thing, proximal, couple pictures. I labeled there CC, CC, and CS. All right, proximal. Here you can actually see the two cavernosal arteries right there. Even with the color Doppler, you see it's not really filling, but that's typical. You're going to have to, that will, that will be more apparent in an erect penis, which this exam was not for. All right, so then mid, ventral penis, transverse mid, and it also tapers down as it goes towards the glands, just like the corpus cavernosum. So mid, couple pictures, color Doppler, and then distal. Distal is right before it reaches the glands. So corpus spongiosum here, corpus cavernosum on either side. And then finally, distally all the way to the glands, you can see again the urethra right here. You know where the urethra terminates in the meatus, and that's pretty much what you're seeing there. Again, the agogenic dots representing air under the foreskin. If you're doing a patient that doesn't have foreskin, you won't see that. And then color Doppler, and that's it. So one quick cine loop from proximal to distal. There you go. And all the anatomy is intact. Normally you can see, again, the agogenic structures or the echogenic dots under the foreskin, which represent air. So I wanted to show you guys this quick anatomy uh, lesson. This, you're gonna, sometimes when you're working by yourself in the ER, you're gonna get weird exams, which you might ha not have established protocols for. So you gotta kind of um, create one on the fly. So if you're creating one on the fly, just remember to just know the anatomy and scan from you know either medial to lateral or proximal to distal and just show all the anatomy. If there's any abnormalities, Obviously, if it's something that's bilateral, you could always check the other side to see if it looks similar. You can figure it out. You know when something's abnormal, when it's not, even if you might not be able to uh, describe what it is. All right, so thank you. Bye.